Mm -hmm. Alright, I was going to see if I could uh, get some people on first, but I'll save the recording anyway. Uh, what I wanted to show you is how to pot up your milkweed, your swamp milkweed. Um, this is pink swamp milkweed in particular. I think it's a Cinderella variety. And uh, what I had done is we're behind the orchard here. Here's the orchard. And we are to the south of the orchard um, in a corner that has grapes and figs and uh, strawberries, you know, perennial fruit along with the orchard. And when I plant my orchard trees, I plant them in a guild. So I plant uh, flowers, herbs, and other things underneath the um, and around the orchard trees to lure in predators and then to um, like predator insects and then to um, dissuade the other insects from coming in that might want to hurt the fruit. So uh, what I had done is I had planted one and two, one, two, I don't think I planted that one. Three, there's three clumps of milkweed. So there's one here, there's one there, and there's one there. And they're pretty large. And uh, when they bloom, the monarchs come to them like crazy. The monarchs really, really, really love them because it's milkweed. Um, and when they go to seed, I don't cover the seeds up. Uh, I let them fly, and so when they flew, <laughs> that's what all these little sticks are. I have some sticks over here, I have some sticks here, um, I have a stick here, I can't tell if you can see it in the camera there, and this is the one I'm going to show you today. I even have one in the strawberry bed here, I have to take out probably manually with a, um, with a hand shovel, and then I took out six earlier today that were all around the strawberry bed so it's one reason I like to keep the sticks up I don't take them down over the fall so I remember where they are so I actually have looking around here's one here here's one here and they're just volunteers so if they are happy growing where they are then I know they're gonna do well you know planted where I actually want them to be so I um, potted some up to donate to the garage sale and then um, I'm going to show you how to pot them up into a pot but then also um, like if I was going to do this just for myself I'll probably get like these these uh, random sticks that are all along in this corner and I will um, put them in a bucket and then I will go out front and I will dig the holes and put them in at the same time so I won't need all the potting soil and all that stuff too so all right so let me come back around here there I am all right so a little bit about me Tammy Lowe the lazy northern gardener I am gardening in Macomb Township and that is zone 6a slash b so we are right on the border of um, a and b and we probably will get warmer in the next several years um, I do expect it, there to be some severe weathers coming up where, you know, one week it might be summer and the next week, week it might be spring. Um, and so I'm trying to prepare the whole garden, the yard for uh, inclement weather or hail or whatever it is that I might need. Frost cloth, if it's too uh, shade, sunny, I'm preparing it for shade. Now, milkweed, um, you don't need that. You don't, milkweed is going to just grow. And... The swamp milkweed, uh, they say is not, it's not invasive like common milkweed is. So common milkweed spreads its roots through the ground and up pops a plant and then spreads more roots and up pops a plant. And it's kind of hard for the common milkweed to be transplanted. And there are about 17 different types of milkweed in Michigan that we have. Um, and so the swamp milkweed is a perennial. And you see that in the wild. And those are the ones that have like the really large leaves. And those are the ones you do not necessarily want to plant in your garden. But swamp milkweed, <coughs> excuse me, um, like, like I showed you, there's clumps that form that get very pretty large. Um, they grow bigger over time. And uh, they are easier to maintain um, in a garden setting 
than the common milkweed. Common milkweed is like a little alien, a big alien that's going to take over, whereas swamp milkweed is smaller. And uh, the what happens with milkweed, because everyone says plant milkweed, plant milkweed, plant milkweed for the monarch butterflies and for the monarchs, they need it, which is true. So, um, hi, if you're just joining us, I'm just telling a little bit about milkweed first, and then I will show how to pot up the swamp milkweed. Um, if you have any comments, you can put them uh, in the comment box below, or if you have any questions as I talk about things, you can always put those in the comments below. Um, you also can share with other people in case, so that they don't miss the information if you like. So I'm talking about monarch butterflies and monarch eggs. Monarchs will only lay their eggs on milkweed plants. Milkweed has a substance in it. It's If you cut a leaf of a milkweed open, it's like a milky stuff that comes out. It's kind of like glue. And it's actually toxic to many animals. And it also doesn't, it doesn't taste good to a bird. So the monarch butterfly, fly, 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 comes to a leaf, lays its eggs, usually underneath a leaf, usually on the bottom of a leaf. As soon as the egg hatches, then it uh, starts eating the leaf. And when they're so, so small, they only eat a little bit of the leaf. But eventually when they get really large, like finger size, they could take down like a whole, like a whole stem of leaves. They need a lot of food. Um, if you're ever interested in raising monarchs, then you would need to know that. Um, the common milkweed, uh, those are the ones that you see along the roadsides or the sides of farms and things and they have the really thick leaves. Now the leaves over time get very leathery. The, the leaves that melt that uh, monarchs really like to eat is the very small, like the tops, that's very tender. That's what they can digest the best. And in the fall, all of the monarch, or the uh, milkweed leaves um, become brown and tough and, and leathery as well. So they can't really, they can't really dine on those leaves as much. So the caterpillar will eat the leaves and they'll eat the flowers too if the flowers are there and there's nothing else to eat. They'll even eat seed pods. I've seen that before. But the butterflies want the pollen, the nectar that's inside the flowers. Now the butterflies, the monarch butterflies will go to any pollinating flower as long as they can get nectar. What I always recommend is that you're planting things that bloom um, with uh, like pollen and nectar, you know, butterfly friendly plants that bloom early in the spring and that bloom late in the, into the fall. So late into the fall would be your goldenrod and your native asters that bush out real big. And those bloom really late into the fall. And that way, if there's any stragglers, because what they'll do is they'll go from Michigan, they'll go all the way down to Mexico, and the ones in Canada will come down through Michigan and go down to Mexico to overwinter, and it, they need food along the way. So they don't just drink from the milkweed flowers, they also drink from anything else that is a uh, pollinating plant, a nectar producing plant. So if you plant early in the spring, and, uh, well, just one second. Noelle's on the other side of the gate there. She's outside the gate. Um, if you plant uh, early spring, then you're getting the, the ones that are migrating north from Mexico. Well, they do like four stops along the way as they're going up to the north parts, where, like up here where they lay their eggs and stuff. Um, so the early spring ones, they're going to need the pollen right away, the nectar right away. So if you've got pollinating plants that are um, blooming soon, she's over here now. Um, then, um, then they have the opportunity to get their food that they need to be able to lay their eggs and have the energy to, um, you know, for the males to find the females and things like that. Um, and then in the fall, as long as you've got the pollinating plants, besides just milkweed, then uh, then they have a, ch a good chance of going all the way down south. And you can plant these pollinated pollinating flowers. It's not just up here in Michigan. I mean, I am the lazy northern gardener, but it's also going all the way down, um, you know, down the states, down to Mexico. So anything that you plant in the southern states, 
that's going to have nectar producing flowers is going to be a good for monarchs as well. Uh, they, they won't lay their eggs on anything but milkweed, but at least they would have the food on the way. So, quick here. So, once again, I had started with three clumps in the front. They went to seed. You can see some dried seed heads kind of over, uh, like in between this tree here, like over here. There's some dried seed heads. I let them go to seed. They fly away like a dandelion would. And then they made all these little volunteer sticks that are sticking up. All right, so let me show you how to do this. Transplanting, bring it down to ground level and tilt you down so you can see. I have got some pots. I have, um, and these are 10 inches tall, it looks like. And I think they're like six inches wide and it's square. Um, if I was going to sell them or, or put them in it for a plant swap or, um, you know, give them to people, I would put them in the pots. Like I said, if it was just me and I was going to put them out, out front, I would just probably get a bucket and uh, put some soil in there. And then as I collect them, I would collect them all at one time and then move them out front. But I'm going to show you what I would do to do this instead. So let me move it up a little closer here. Super, super, super simple and easy. So I want you to make, make sure you can see this. I'm going to take, take my pot. Like I said, it's like 10 inches tall. It's six by six. Gives lots of room for roots because you're going to need those. I'm going to throw maybe a handful in the bo bottom. Uh, maybe a handful and a half in the bottom just to cover the bottom with some soil. And then here's where the easy part is. I have a very small shovel. I love this thing because it's so easy to maneuver. It's not a giant spade. It's a small shovel. I know this is a milkweed right here. Because of this stick, that's why I left them up so I could find them in the spring. I like to rake back some of the leaves and debris that I just had covering this area. There we go. Usually in the bottom of the stem. Yep, there it is. You can see just a little bit of greenery popping out. Now this is white because it's not been in the sunshine, but at least that tells me this stick is alive and I can go ahead and transplant it. I'm gonna go straight down real close to it, maybe like the center of the stem, because the stem kind of goes out this way. The center of the stem is here. So I'm gonna go maybe three inches away from the, four inches away from the stem, straight down sharp. I'll show you why in a minute, Tip it up. Straight down sharp. Oh, almost out. This soil is pretty dry. It um, the land used to be, I guess, an orchard, so it's kind of sandy, very loose, very good soil, not clay. Um, oh, now I see some resistance. Sometimes they send their roots way over here. Oh, yep, there they are. Wow. Before I dig this, let me show you. Wow, look how far over they sent their roots. That's amazing. Which I'm not going to worry about because I'm going to cut those away a little bit, probably, with the shovel. I, that's why I felt resistant, so I figured there's something going on. Cut them straight through, pull it out. Now let's look at the plants. Most of the soil has come away because, I, like I said, it's really dry. So the soil has come away. I'm down here where you can see me now. Okay. I can see you. There is no, if I shake it, look at That's just the roots. There's really nothing going on with it. It's not clinging to any soil. But the plant is starting to grow, which is cool. You can see those little leafets coming out. All right. So. If I had some scissors, I don't want to break it. If I had some scissors, I would snip these off. But for today, I'm just going to set them in here. I'm going to look and see where the roots, I mean where the little stems are coming out. Like right here. And then I'm going to go ahead and fill it with some soil. I'll give it a good shake. This is, uh, the soil I use is uh, a spoma. Organic potting mix. 
think they said it's got some mulch and a lot of different compost materials in it. It does not have like um, artificial chemicals in it. So let's take a look. I am just gently shaking it because the roots were long. The pot is deep and I want the soil to go all in those holes. Now this is really good if you're if you've got volunteers and you don't want to pull them out and throw them away but you're not sure where you want to put them yet. This is how you get your free plants. Is you could pot them up, keep them in a spot that's um, sunny but sheltered where they're not going to get winded on or things like that. I'm going to keep an eye on this little guy here. Make sure I don't smother him or squish him. And I might even cover him with some loose soil because he was underground anyway. But this is really nice because, and as long as you keep them watered, um, especially in the warm weather, they will be fine until you decide where you want to put them. So you could even just take a pot and walk it around your yard and say, what do I want it here? What do I want it here? You can decide where you'd be able to see monarchs best when they're flying. You could decide where you want to put them to catch the caterpillars because the uh, caterpillars love this plant as well. We had one in our old house where the um, caterpillars were all over it in the front yard. It was one plant and they really ate it down to the leaves. Luckily it was, there were more plants nearby. Um, but there were 11 large caterpillars on it. Now, I don't necessarily recommend getting, if you're going to collect and raise caterpillars, monarch caterpillars, I wouldn't get them when they're very, very large because they can have diseases in them. But if you, like with that patch, I took all of them, I put them all in one container, made sure they were fed well and kept, you know, healthy in a healthy environment and not with the other caterpillars. Um, that way, if they had any diseases, they weren't going to transfer them to anyone else. But they did just fine. They made their chrysalises and did their thing. Final step, water it all in. I like this espoma mix because it's really loose. The water does not sit on top at all. It goes all the way down to the bottom. And that's important. See, there's our little buddy here. And again, it's light colored because it was under the leaves. Uh, you could because I had leaves covering it, I could take some of the leaves and put it on top. I'm just gonna put some of this loose soil back over here. It's gonna pop out on its own. And it's always a good idea, like I'm gonna leave this stem. It's a long stem, it'll remind me of, uh, you know, what's planted there, what's in that pot. But it's also a good idea to put a label in there when you're done, just to make sure you remember what it actually is and don't accidentally plant the wrong thing. So that is all there is to potting up a volunteer um, swamp milkweeds. Super, super simple. I've got a large spot in front. I'm going to put them all there together in one area. And if you're going to plant for monarchs, that's another tip. You want to plant probably three to five plants at a time in one area if possible. Like in, a, like in some kind of like a circle fashion. Um, kind of like you would do tulips because when they are flying there there we go when uh, when the they are flying in the sky and they're looking down from the sky their vision is different than ours and they can see the the plants that they need they can see better when there are multiples together when there's a larger group um, you should look that up sometime it's kind of cool um, but like I said these they're so simple to pot up and then just move them where you want to. If you were to get a size, a, let's see, a pot this size at one of the local nurseries, um, some of the high-end nurseries might be $25. Um, some of the lower ones might be probably $12, $15. And it's a perennial. And you can see how much it spreads. So the perennial is going to come back every year. It's going to get larger and larger each each time. It doesn't it doesn't grow wider, but like I said, it, it throws seeds around and gets volunteers. So moving this means I don't have to buy another plant. 
and I just saved myself, eh, let's say, let's say $15 by doing that myself. So I have got, I see three, four, five, six, seven, seven that are not in the strawberry bed and then the one that's in the strawberry bed, so eight, plus the one I just did. So that's nine swamp milkweed I can put in one area and fill it in well and uh and I I don't have to buy them and I can go out and I can check for eggs monarch eggs and I can check for monarch caterpillars and I can watch the monarch butterflies oh I know I know where I'm gonna put them so I can see them it'll be out my front window uh, I think where I had my roosted out potatoes before there's a big strip there which is kind of near the berry patch so when I look out the front window I should be able to there and there's there's a common milkweed up there too so I should be able to see all of the butterflies flying around um, oh I have room I have room near the yellow magnolia too in that bed um, so that should be good because then I can see them out my front window and I can see them out my side window and uh, and it's super cool to see so you know when it comes to things like that it's nice to have flowers and masses that you can see from a distance yes that's nice but it's even better when you're providing flowers that um, insects need and they're drawn to them and um, I'm sorry I'm distracted there's a big old bumblebee who is pollinating my peach tree that's so exciting um but yeah if you want free plants do this now it's great time it's it's really dry even though we had some rain um a lot of my my volunteers came up right through the leaves and the grass clippings and things like that over the winter time and they're doing their own thing so i did start some in the uh milk jug method and i didn't see any come out um at least not yet and then I what I hear is it takes another they say it takes another couple years before they're fully mature but um, but then again these sticks they've already grown one season these volunteers they've already self sown grown one season and so they're ready to um, make flowers and do their thing and uh, you saw the roots too so super healthy root system strong root system and uh, it's definitely something to consider. So this is Tammy Lowe, the Lazy Northern Gardener, and I am signing out. And I hope you learn and grow, and I hope you learn and grow some more. And try something new. Love ya. Love ya. Bye.